Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special session for the Garden State Java User Group. This is a special session in November uh, on, on a Friday. We will have another session on Tuesday as well. So we look forward to seeing all of you back again. Thank you for joining us on the Friday evening. Uh, today, we have a special event with not one, but two amazing speakers from Brazil. I have the honor of introducing the first one, and he will introduce the second one. Uh, I'd like to um, welcome Bruno, Bruno Souza, who's from Brazil. He's a Java champion. Um, he runs the Code for Life, and he is one of the leaders of the um, SoJava, the Brazilian Java user group, Chuck. So without further ado, Bruno, wherever you are, uh, if you can come on on stage. Where's Bruno? <laughs> and Bruno's here. Bruno is going to come join us in a second. And uh, he's going to introduce our next speaker as well. So welcome, Bruno. Yeah. Excuse me that you did that. All right. Okay. That's not my email. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's who he here because uh, he was sending the. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just used this people. No problem. So let me just. All right. Okay. So, hello, everyone. Uh, so, good to be here with you. Thanks a lot, Chandra, uh, for the introduction. Thanks, Barry, for actually making this thing happen, right? Uh, wow. Thanks, Paul. Very nice to meet you, finally. Um, and, and especially, let me say thanks, Rodrigo, right? Because Rodrigo is the one that actually uh, pushed the ball and made the ball start rolling, right? So, we're actually doing uh, this, this tour around uh, the U.S., um, so I came from Brazil, Vinicius lives here in California, and we're visiting, not, it's a small tour, but very wide area, right? Because we're doing all four corners of the U.S. We start in Chicago, we came here, then tomorrow we're going to be in Houston, and then we do Jacksonville, Florida, and Tampa, and then we go to San Francisco, right? So we're going to go to the four corners of the U.S., right? Uh, so that's really, that's really nice to be here with you. Thanks, everyone, uh, for being here. Thank you that's watching us uh, online, right, and participating here. So uh, I want to make this this first uh, conversation here and, and um, uh, you know, let me know how much time I have, actually. But, but anyway, yeah, you... you, it, you may, it, when, it comes, uh, when it becomes here, why don't you take the microphone? Just make sure that... Oh, yeah, sure. Too. Of course. Um, when, oh, I'm going to have the Madonna microphone. That's so uh, cool. Yes. When, when it gets to be midnight, you should stop talking. All right. Okay. Don't don't joke like this, man, because I take it serious. <laughs> All right. Okay. So midnight, stop talking or Venetius should start talking. All right. <laughs> don't, you know. Okay. So, so basically, um, what I'm going to do here really quick is that, um, let me just tell this. So about a month, two months ago, almost to the to the day, two months ago, New York, not here, but there in New York, right, to launch uh, my new book. It's called The Developer Career Master Plan. I wrote with Heather Vancura. Uh, she's the head of the JCP, the Java Community Process. That's the organization that defines the Java standards worldwide. So, um, and Chandra is in this book, right? Barry is in the book for sure, right? You know, so, so, uh, my, my, one of my goals on this tour is to get as many as of the participants of, of this book as possible to sign it, right? So, you have to sign before you go, Chandra, right? Mary did that yesterday. Uh, so, you know, you and Barry, please, uh, you know, uh, Mary decides to to sign on the page that says, uh, "There's a there's a page in the beginning here that has everyone that's in the book. That's where she decides to sign, right? So you guys can sign here, or you can sign your in your chapter, whatever you want, right? In the front cover, you know, it's, you decide, okay? You know, so I, I really want to start really quick, telling you a little bit, not about the book itself, right? But about the the concept that's behind here." Because the whole idea of the book is to actually build a uh, uh, a full master plan for the developer career. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the behind that, and um, I want to give you guys um, 
two gifts actually i'm going to give you guys two gifts uh, two gifts and i want to do um a lot of i want to i want to spend as much time as possible in helping you in whatever career situation you're going to right now right so i'm going to i'm going to be quick on the on the content let me give this to you because you said it had to leave so make sure you sign before you before you do it so uh so let me kind of quickly talk a little bit about uh so the idea of career right uh you know many people try to write a career like this line that you start and you go somewhere right and people say oh you know you have ups and downs in this line but actually career is not a line right career is a loop you know you there, you keep growing uh in your career I, I like to say more like a spiral right because you know the more you the more you grow and the more you, you go around the spiral the more you grow and so there's there's four uh main components that spiral right that's what we that, that's things that we do over and over and over uh that actually gonna get, gonna get our careers growing so two of them are extremely important right i mean all the all for them but but one of the things that that developers like uh is soft developers and technical people they how do i say you know they're addicted to learning, right? You know, uh, um, we buy courses that we don't watch. We buy we buy books that we don't read, right? Uh, no, we we subscribe to blogs that we never go back to read them. Uh, you know, we add uh, um, uh, YouTube videos to our to our you know to to watch a list that we never go back to. You know, we are addicted to, to learn, right? And so, um, and learning is important, but it's not the only thing that you need to be that you need to do to grow your career, right? Because learning doesn't give you the most important thing. Is something wrong? Something wrong? Yeah. So, um, and the problem the problem with learning that's uh, the way our brains work. Is that our brains only actually learn things when we do things, right? So, so we call there's a, there's two there's two different things that we have to consider is knowledge and skills, right? So knowledge, uh, it's usually a uh, is it okay now, all right, cool, okay. So so knowledge is connected. Uh, um, things in your brain, let's say, right? You know, uh, you, you, you thing, uh, and you know, it's there somewhere in your brain, right? And you, you have a hard time remembering it, right? That's why, you know, the guys are studying right now, you study something and then you don't remember the time they have to do the test, right? And, and knowledge is like this, right? So it's hard, it's hard for us to, to retain, to, to recover. And, uh, and not only that, when, because you're disconnected, right? When we recover one of them, you don't recover everything else, right? You have to recover each one of them. Now, skill is a right. Skill is applied knowledge, right? And skill is actually a a collection of uh, a connected ideas and connected things in your brain, right? Connected pathways to your brain, and in such that you know it's very fast for you to recover them. And once you recover one of them, we recover all of them, right? So, for example, you know, you can read about riding a bike as much as you want, right? But that's not going to make you ride a bike. But, the, but, and so, and you might remember things like, yeah, you know, I have to turn to one side and turn to the other and kind of, you know, uh, move my legs. You might remember those things. They're just connected. But the moment that you apply that knowledge and you, you go and you build the skill of riding a bike, this whole thing just happens. Right. So all of us had the experience of driving a car, for example. And when we start driving a car, we, you know, we have to be, oh, I have to pay attention to the mirror and, you know, and, and, and change the shift and press the brake and, you know, and, and look back and look to the other sides. And, you know, there's a, there's a, the light coming up and there's a sign. It seems everything's so complicated, so hard. Right. But then you, you do this over and over and then suddenly, this whole thing just gets completely automatic, right? To the point that many of us 
are able to do many other things like eating and talking on the phone while driving a car, right? You know, because, yeah, right? And more than that, especially if you do something like, for example, if you go, uh, you commute every, to the same place, right? And you come drive back home. There's going to be moments in your life that you're going to be tired. You're going to be thinking about something else. And, you know, and you get you get in the car in the, in, at the end of your work day. And then you're home. And you cannot even remember driving to get home, right? Anyone have felt that experience here? Yeah, everyone, right? So does that mean that you are just kind of not paying attention to anything along the way? No, it's not, right? You were paying attention. Right, you know, if someone crossed in front of you, you would have uh, brake the car. You know, it's not it's not like they you're completely driving by automatic automatically, right? You're thinking, you're th paying attention, but you're you're not this because it becomes so automatic. That's what skill is, right? Skill it is connected uh, uh, information in your brain. That's very easy to access, very fast. You don't even think about it, and you have that, right? So. When you talk about learning, it's really important, but learning by itself just builds knowledge. You have to practice to build skills. Skills is an interesting thing. Let me can I, can I write in this, this board right there? Here. No, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So just really quick about three things about skills that are very important, right? So uh skills I call the F, can you guys see from there? Not you. You can't see. Can more or less? Okay, right. So, so I call the F three of skill acquisition, right? There's three Fs that we require for skill acquisition, right? The first F is we have to force it. I'm sorry. Uh, not force it. Sorry, I started with the wrong one. Okay, I'm just gonna use my hand here. <laughs> All right, yeah. All right, we have to fire, not force, right? That's the first F. So what does it mean? The only way for us to acquire skill is if you fire the right neurons in your brain about the skill, right? So for example, if you're reading a book about, bi about riding a bicycle, are you firing or read a book about Java, for example, right? are you firing the neurons about reading or you find the neurons of programming, right? I'm super simplifying here, of course, right? But you know, you're gonna you're you're gonna be finding your neurons about reading, right? So if you want to be a good developer, if you want to be a, a good programmer, uh, you want to be a good Java developer, for example, you have to fire the Java neurons, right? And so that means you have to do it, right? The fire means you have to do it. That's why practice. It's such an important thing in our, right? Because if we don't do it, we don't build the skills in our brains, okay? The second F for skill acquisition, right, is force. You know, uh, your, your, the way your neurons work, they're biological uh, structures, right? They work very similar to your, to your muscles. If I get, for example, let's say, this here is a very, very heavy plate, right? And I'm going to do some exercise with it. You know, it, it weighs like one kilo, right? And I'm going to do some exercise and I do like 10 flexions here with one kilo today, right? And then tomorrow I do 10 again with one kilo. And then a day later, 10 again, one kilo. You know, a year from now, I'm still doing 10 with one kilo. Am I getting stronger? No. Why am I not getting stronger? Because my muscles get strong enough to do this 10, one kilo. And that's all that's needed, right? I don't need anything else. So I'm not getting stronger. That's the same thing with our neurons. You know, if, I'm, if, if, you, if you don't force your neurons, then you don't learn new skills. Because it gets enough, you know, and that's, that's enough. So you have to force it. And here's an interesting thing that has everything to do with practice. You, For you to force your neurons, you have to make mistakes, right? That's, that's the thing, you know, when you're doing muscles, 
Most is like, you know, you force it and you feel that your muscle is, 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 is sore, right? Not extremely sore, right? You have to have a, a, a limit, right? But, but in terms of skill acquisition, it's about making mistakes. If you're, if you're doing it and you're not making mistakes, it's because you're not forcing enough, right? But on the other hand, if you force too much, if I say, okay, I'm going to be super strong, right? So I'm going to get this 100 kilo plate, right? And I'm going to do 100 push-ups, right? What happens? What is going to happen? I'm going to destroy my muscles, right? So the same thing happens with free skill acquisition, right? If, or, or, or Java development, for example. If I put myself in a position where I'm doing things that I have no idea what I'm doing and I'm just making mistakes all the time, I'm also not learning, right? I'm creating a what we call a this moment where I'm going to be – I'm going to create a version of that instead of uh, learning, right? So – Practice is this thing that we have to do that that is we have to force it enough that we make mistakes, but not force too much that we get in the desperation zone. Okay, so force is fundamental for skill acquisition. And the last F, right? Remember that's F three, right? The last F is about its frequency. You know, we only acquire skills if we do something frequent enough, right? So, you know, let's say um, I want to be very strong, right? So, you know, I don't have time to do exercise every day, right? So instead of doing like, you know, 10 push-ups like every day, for example, right? I'm just going to do, you know, once a month, I'm going to do 300, right? Does that mean I'm going to extremely strong? No, I'm probably going to destroy my arm, right? And, you know, and I'm not going to gonna get strong. So we have to do it frequent, right? So if you want to do any kind of skill acquisition, you have to fire. That means apply the right neuron. So you have to do whatever that you think that, you, that you're, trying, you're trying to learn. You have to force it, do a little bit above your capability. So you actually make mistakes and, and force it. And you have, to, uh, you have to do it frequently enough for you to actually acquire that skill. Make sense? So that's why the second part of our, um, and are you put, you put here on purpose here? Let me just put, I'll just get the presentation again here. Right. Okay, cool, All right. Okay, so so when you, so you learn something and you have to practice it to acquire these skills, right? Now, the interesting thing is, is for our careers, Right. Uh, if you if you want to grow our careers, we we cannot try to grow our careers alone. Careers are not something that you do alone. At least not a development career, right? Maybe there's some careers that you do alone. I don't know. I don't think there are, right? But software development definitely is not something that you do alone. And so uh, so that's why it's so important that we meet people along the way. That's why we have to network, right? We have to cr to create uh, the possibility for us to meet other people, so so we can help each other, right? Because there's far too many things to learn. There's far too many things to do. You, since you have to learn and you have to practice, that means you can't learn everything, right? That's one of the biggest problems that we have in software development is that developers wanting to learn everything, but if you try to learn everything, you can't. Why? Because it's not learn is not enough. You have to practice. Right? And if you don't have time to learn everything, you have even less time to practice everything. Right? So that's why we need people. We need other people because then we can we can all work on different skills. Right? So if I, for example, Vinicius is a great guy that works a lot with IoT, Internet of Things. Right? So he, he works with IoT protocols and, and devices and all these kind of things. I like, I think that those things are interesting, but it's not my focus. It's not my objective. So I don't learn and practice enough. But if I want to do anything in terms of IoT, what do I do? I call Vinicius, right? So yesterday, uh, we're, while, while we were in Chicago, I had this meeting uh, with, with uh, a partner that was needing something about artificial intelligence, right? So I know enough about artificial intelligence to actually help my partner, right? But he had some particular discussions, particular things that I that I needed help with. 
And I was in Silvio's house. Uh, Silvio is, the, is one of the leaders from the Chicago Java Easy Group, and I was staying in his house. And so I, Silvio is a specialist uh, that he's been working with AI for a long time. So I called Silvio and said, hey, Silvio, can you help me out of this on this particular problem that, we, that we're dealing here, right? So that's why we need to network, right, to actually be able to achieve, to have access to a wider variety of skills, Right, so you can have your skills and go deep in your skills. I can have my skills. Vinicius can have his skills. Chandra can have his skills. And then, because we have a network of people, we have access to more skills, more knowledge, to more opportunities. Make sense? So that's why it's very important for you guys to do what you're doing here, coming here in person and meeting people. Right, but it's not very useful when she sits all the way in the back. Hello, how are you doing? And then he sits all the way there. And then they sit all the way in the back. The funny thing is, everyone sat separate here, right? We're all developers, we're all nerds, right? We don't want to touch people, right? The only two people that sat together, those two in the back. I think you know each other, right? You know, I think, you know, that's why you sat together, right? So we have to use those opportunities here to meet people, to talk with people, to actually understand what other people know what 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 they're doing right so that's the only way that we can have more opportunities more possibilities okay make sense and last but not least so here this is for me the number four here is uh the thing that really gets your career growing right you learn you practice you work with other people and then you share your knowledge sharing your knowledge is the thing that's going to make your career grow faster. Why? Because I have I have this thing that I say the five steps of sharing, right? It's not really steps, but it's not it's not it's a five five things that you have to think about when you, when you talk about sharing. When you share what you know, other people know what you know. And because you know what you know, they trust you in what you know. And when they need what you know, they call you and not someone else. Okay? That is the way for you to become an expert in the market. Right? Because when people know what you know, they call you to solve the most important problems. And that happens inside a company. That happens inside the user group. That happens inside, uh, uh, you know, your, your school. Right? That happens inside inside everything that you participate at. If people know that, for example, Barry is here and he's dealing with the camera, right? Because we know that Barry is the guy, is the camera guy. If I'm gonna do anything that is related to, to to recording, I'm gonna say, "Hey, Barry, can you bring your camera?" Right? And so what happens that because Barry is called to do to do the camera work in many places, he become amazing at camera work. For example. Right? Right. And that's a different thing, right? So, but that's, you know, because because you never you never had to do this professionally, right? But for example, Vinicius, every time anyone in Amazon thinks about IoT, they talk with Vinicius. If anyone in Amazon thinks about Java, they talk with Vinicius, right? Because Vinicius puts himself as the IoT Java guy, right? And so, so that's then, you, then, then what happens is that all the big problems that happen around Java and IoT inside Amazon, Vinicius is involved in somehow. And because he's involved in hard problems, he become amazing at that things, right? So sharing, guys, is the piece. Now, here's the interesting thing. A lot of technical people, they learn a lot. And they practice a lot because they love to do that. And they stay here. Right? They don't do networking, they don't share. And what happens, they get stuck in their careers. Because they get over by learning and practicing. They never think that they're good enough, right? And they get stuck because they don't meet other people, right? So they don't get opportunities. They don't, get ha they don't have access to more, to more skills, right? And because they don't share, no one knows that they know and they never get, get called to the big problems. And because they never get called to the big problems, they never actually learn. 
right? Because they don't force, they don't do it frequently, they just do whenever they have time. Right? So that is the spiral, guys, that we have to be doing everything. Every time, you know, and you guys can start, I, I assume that you are the youngest ones here, right? So I assume you're still at university, right? So that's why you can start right now at university, right? So I, I for, as an example, I was called by son. I was not looking for a job, right? I was called by son to go work for son. And I joined Sun on the week that Java was first announced. Right. So and 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 because I was there on the right time, I became the Brazilian Java man. Right now, I was called to work at Sun when I was at university. I was invited to work as as a trainee. A, a job as a trainee is a job that's filled because when you share what you know, people know what you know, and they trust you in what you know. And when they need you and they need what you know, they call you and not someone else. So I was called for a trainee job. So research shows that up to 75% of the jobs in the market are in what we call the hidden job market. You can just search Google online for what it is, but the hidden job market are the jobs are not visible, that no one knows exist. And because no one knows exist, you cannot apply to those jobs because they don't exist. But how are those hidden job, mark, job, job offers fulfilled? Because someone that knows you calls you. But Bruno, I don't understand. What's the hidden job? What's this hidden jobs? Well, let's imagine, for example, Vinicius. Vinicius was working for me. He was not, but let's imagine. Vinicius was working for me. Yeah, he did work for me in the past. But, you know, let's say Vinicius was working for me in Brazil, right? And he had a good job and everything was great. And, and we had a good relationship. Then one day, Vinicius comes to me and says, hey, Bruno, you know what? I'm moving to California. Right? I have a great opportunity there. There's not something I, there's not something I can provide. You know, I cannot provide Vinicius to go work in California. But he could find a he got a company that wanted to hire him to come to work in California. So Vinicius is saying, I'm leaving, man. And I'll say, No, Vinicius, I need you, man. Are you leaving right now? No, 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 no. It's gonna take about a couple of months for me to leave. Right? Okay, cool. Now, at that moment, I'm the only person in the company that knows that I have a job available. Right? Because I can't go tell HR that Vinicius is going to leave because then they're going to terminate him, right? And I still need him. I cannot tell for the rest of the team that Vinicius is leaving. So I'm the only person that knows that Vinicius is leaving. And so what is the thing, first thing that I do? I say, okay, Vinicius, do you have anyone that can do your job that you know? So, be, so when you leave, I can hire someone else? And then he says, what's your name, sir? Isaac. So he says, yeah, man, Isaac is a guy to study with me. He knows a lot about IoT. He can totally do my job. And so I get the phone call and I call Isaac. Hey, Zach, look, man, I have this great job. Pays a lot of money. It's fully remote. Awesome technology, right? Do you want to work with me? Yeah, cool. All right. So now before Vinicius left, I already arranged with Isaac, he's going he's gonna to work for me, right? And so the moment Vinicius leaves, I call him and say, hey, man, now we're gonna, I'm going to hire you, all right? So I call HR and say, hey, HR, I have this position because Vinicius left, right? And I have this guy, Isaac, and he, he already accepted. Now, pay attention because that's very important. What happens the moment I call HR? HR says, okay, we're going to start a position and we're going to put a position on the website. Right? But look, that position does not exist. I already talked with Zach. He already accepted. The position does not exist. Right? So Barry might apply for that position and he's, not, he's never going to receive an answer. Why? 
because no one is going to look for that. That is the hiding job market, guys. Okay? It happens all the time. Research shows that 75% of the positions are filled that way. But I say that the best positions, it's more than 75%. Why? Because let's imagine I have a bad position. And I call Isaac. Hey, Isaac, Vinicius is going to leave. I have this position open. It pays very little money. The technology is very boring. You have to come to the office every day, right? There's no way you're going to grow inside the company. Do you want to work for me? No, right? So then I try with Isaac. I try with her. I try with him. I try, try, try. Everyone tells me no. And then what I have to do? I have to put the position online, right? So the best positions, it's not 75%. It's maybe 85 or 95 or maybe 99% of the best positions are filled in the hidden job market. Make sense? So that's why, guys, sharing, it's so important because you have to position yourself in the market in a way that people know what you know. Make sense? Sharing is fun. Sharing is fun. It's the reason for doing it. Well, and it's a good, and it's a good way of learning. It is a great way of learning, right? Because when you share, you learn more. You, you the, the best way to learn is by sharing, right? It's the one that you retain most knowledge is when it feels good to do. I mean, just for that benefit. Right. But that is not true for everyone. Okay. Right? There are people that are scared of sharing. There are people that, uh, uh, you know, that that want to do it, right? And so, so they they can do it in small ways. It's all, all kinds of ways to do this, even to make it not scary. But I agree with you because I also like to do right. So that's why I travel, right? You know, it's it's a lot of fun to come and travel and meet you guys in person, all that. Okay, Vinicius, can you pass the next slide? So, uh, in the book, right, we talk about those four things. Uh, you know, so in three different parts, right? So we talk about part one is the basics, right? So learning, networking, skills and practice. And then uh, part two, we talk about, you know, a little bit more advanced things, right? We talk about co how communities, how you, can part how you can participate in a community like this because it's a great way to share and do networking when you're part of a community like this, right? How you reach out to mentors, right? You know, Chandra said, uh, I'm not sure what you said here because you, you told me one thing, but I wasn't here, right? But he said, yeah, so so Chandra, Chandra said I'm I'm his mentor, right? So having some, yes. So ha ha having someone that's that is helping you advance or helping you discuss things, right? It's always important, right? Uh, participate on user groups. You know the guys that are running here, uh, the user groups, right? They're 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 doing a special type of sharing because they're creating a community for other people to benefit from, right? Uh, you know, things like social media conference. So there's all kinds of things that we're talking about. And then on part three, we talk about the the, the top parts of sharing and and and, and career building. The things like public speaking, right? Uh, participant in open source, leadership, and and all those kind of things. So the book goes have 15 steps, and I'm gonna leave this here in a minute for because I want I want to I want to guys have a conversation here with you if there's anything here that you like to do you don't know how to do i can you can ask questions i can answer this right so so we can tailor that to you but one thing i want to tell you one thing i want to do can you can you step like twice twice one yeah two one one more yes so the one thing i want to do to every one of you is that just last week packed publishing authorizing me to give you guys to everyone here a free chapter of the book Right. So if you come to this URL here or this QR code right now, right, you're going to get a free chapter of the book. Right. So I'm going to leave this here while I'm going to open for questions. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, uh, I'm just going to stay right here in the corner because then I don't stand in front of the line. So, uh, yeah, just just access this right now and then you can get a free a free chapter of the book. And that's the free chapter is the learning chapter. Right. Uh, and and it's, it's like one, one of the, the fundamentals for everything that we do here. So go ahead and, and download that. Now, when you think about your career, right, 
what is the thing that you want this i want to do things one what is the thing that you want to do what is the thing you want to accomplish how far do you want to get right you know do you want to be a a superstar an ex expert do you want to be a java champion do you want to be an open source developer you know do you want to do you want to have your own company i mean how far do you want to get in your career right and the second thing i want you to think about is what prevents you from doing that what's prevent you from from, from achieving that because I want to help you solve the, that problem. So open up for questions. So how far you want to get and what prevents you from get, getting that? Oh, I'm going to chime in with a discussion. Yeah, sure. Give you a little bit of the sense of the dialogue. Mm -hmm. uh, not sure networking can help me find a new job. That's why today, as uh, my public holiday, I do lead code. And then I responded by saying, I don't agree that networking can't really help you. Is I think networking is a powerful tool for finding work. Mm -hmm. And then the response was, it could help, but for, and now I can't read the word, we have to pass uh, three to four uh, coding sessions. Mm -hmm. And they ask you about who you are only on the very last interview. So. Right. Comments. Right. That's a very look. That's a very very good thing. Sure. Okay. So 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 the question is more or less like this. You know, in choosing practice for interviews or doing network, I'm gonna choose practice for interviews because that's what I have to go. I have to go to three four interviews and and do whiteboard uh, coding and do answer questions all these kind of things and. I need to be good at this so I can get jobs, right? That is that is that that is the idea. Network is not going to help with me with that. So so there is a misconception there, and what is the misconception is the misconception is that uh, the best way to get jobs is going through interviews, right? That's the misconception, and I already told you guys that seventy five percent of of, of the, the the positions available are not even visible. Much less, you know, you you can uh, you cannot even apply to them, right? Now, what happens when someone wants you? That happened with me multiple times. So, for example, uh, I like to talk about Sun because Sun doesn't exist anymore, so we can just talk about everything, right? So that's very easy, right? So, uh, uh, so when I when I when I was hired by Sun. To be, I already told you guys that I, I the first time I was hired by Sun, I, I was hired as a trainee, and you know, uh, uh, do you know how my interview was for the trainee? It was like this: the guy called me and said, "Bruno, you know, we have a trainee position. If you want, that's yours." And so I went. He said, "You know, we're going to schedule an interview for you," and I went there to an interview. This the, the guy was a guy called Newton Gadgets. That's my was my my one of my first bosses. Uh, yes, you know Newton, right? So, yeah, so Newton, uh, he lives near my house right now. So, uh, Newton called me and said he was going to do an interview with you. And so I went there to Sun to be interviewed, right? And then I stayed there and I waited and waited and waited and waited and waited for a long time. And Newton never called me for the interview, right? And I was just there waiting, waiting, waiting. So then suddenly, Newton comes out of the room and he said, Bruno, I have a meeting and I have to leave, right? If uh, you, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the general manager for Sun Brazil, right? Uh, Dario was his name. Dario is going to call you and talk with you. If he asks if I interviewed you, you say, yes, you, I did. And then I already said that you that 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 I already accepted you, and he left, and I was like, "What was what just happened, right?" And so, a few minutes later, that you called me, and I went there. He interviewed me, and he said, "Did you talk to Newton already?" I said, "Yes." And what did he say? Well, he said that I'm hired. I said, "Yes, you're hired." You know, I just I just like to talk to the newcomers. And that was my interview at Sun, right? So the reality is very simple. When someone wants you, they'll hire you 
and they're not going to ask you stupid questions. Right? Because they know you. They know who you are. Why did that happen? Because Newton already knew me. Right? You know, I was I always volunteered to help some things at Sun. You know, I worked for a, a Sun partner in the past. Right? So everything, every time there's something from Sun, I would be there. And I would volunteer to help. I would help out things. So Newton knew who I was. He just wanted to hire me. Second time I was hired by Sun. Right? I, uh, you know, a, a guy called me and said, Bruno, um, we really need something like someone like you in the team for the NetBeats team. And I suggested you to my boss. And she's going to call you. So my, my future boss, Judith, she called me. And she said, you know, look, uh, everyone in the team says that you're the right person. I just want to hire you. And I said, look, I have my own company, Judith. I don't want to be hired, right? I have my own company. So she said, well, I said, can you, can you contract my company and I work for you? She said, yeah, we can try that. So, so we started to negotiate. We spent four months negotiating, four months back and forth. I, I, wanted, I wanted too much money. She did not have that much money. So she had to find money inside Sun to hire me. Um, she wanted me to do things that I was not very willing to do, right? Because she wanted me to work on NetBeans and Open Solaris. I was a Java developer. I wanted to work on NetBeans. I did not want to work for Open. I wanted to be a contractor. She wanted me to be an employee. So we negotiated back and forth for four months, right? So we finally got an agreement. I accepted some things. She accepted some things. And I started. So that's how it happened. She called me one day and said, Bruno, Everything's set. Uh, you're going to receive, you know, uh, a few minutes from now, HR is going to send you an offer. And all you need to do is, is, is say okay to the email, right? And I said, okay, perfect. I did receive the email. I said, okay. So then Judith called me again and said, okay, can you start, can you travel tomorrow, today? Can you travel today to Prague? Because we're going to have a meeting for all the, with all the team. And everyone's already in Prague. Can you travel today to Prague? I said, no way, right? It's like, you know, middle of the afternoon. There's no way I can't I can, I can travel today, right? But I could travel tomorrow. She said, okay, so travel tomorrow then. So she gave me a phone number to someone inside Sun that could, could get a ticket for me for the next day, all of that. Early next day, she calls me again and say, Bruno, very important, man. Don't, you know, I know you're traveling today, but before you travel, you have to do this. Pay attention to what she said to me. HR has just published your position on the internet. Can you please go there and submit your resume? <laughs> right? So that's what happens when, when, you, when people want you. Can I talk about you? Sure. There's no secret there. All right. So if, 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 there's, if there is one... If there, if there is one you stopped before, okay? Because it's been recorded, right? At least at least I said, not you. So when Vinicius was being interviewed, right, at Amazon, he was very nervous, right? Remember that? You were very nervous, right? But then he came to Amazon, and Vinicius was the owner. You know, he's the owner of a company. He was the owner of a company, right? He's still today he was the owner of a company. And so he worked for himself, not for a few years, but for many, many, many years, right? Vinicius is an entrepreneur for a long, long time. He had very few previous jobs, right? He was always an entrepreneur for as long as he could imagine. So Amazon wanted to hire him. And Vinicius was nervous. And he got there to the interview. And he said to the guys, look, guys, I'm an entrepreneur. I run a company. I do the financial parts. I do the, you know, the, the coding. I do all the things. I'm, I'm not a, like a full-time developer. I do other things. If you ask me these stupid, hard questions about software development, I'm not going to answer because I don't know. Is that right? True? And then, and then what, what did they do? Look, I'm talking to you about, about Amazon. So what did they do? They said, what are you working with right now? Reply. No, no, just reply. What are you working with right now? IoT. So... What what is the, the one thing you know a lot about IoT? Okay, cool. So 
then they only ask it questions about MQQT protocol to Avinicius. And what happened? He passed them because that's the thing that he knew about, right? Guys, when someone wants you, they want you. They will make everything possible to hire you because they know you, they trust you. Now, when they don't know you, they don't trust you, what do they do? They throw stupid questions at you. They make you do whiteboard testing. They make you, because they don't know who you are. I wrote a book talking about those two things, right? One is what I call the acceptance process. What Vinicius went through is the acceptance process. I want to hire Vinicius. So I'm going to do everything I can to hire him. It's, it may not work. You know, maybe someone else from the team talks with him and hates him, right? Maybe someone else in the team had a problem with him in the past and doesn't want to hire him, right? It might not work. I'm not saying that the acceptance path works every single time. But if I want to hire you, I'm going to make everything to my power to hire you. The other process is what we call the rejection process. And the rejection process that I don't know you, I don't trust you. And so I'm going to do everything in my power to reject you. Because there's this idea that if I, if I reject him, I reject him, I reject him, I reject her, eventually he's the one that's going to be left and I'm going to hire the best person, right? And it would be okay, guys. It would be totally okay if, only, if the, you only had one of those two processes. For example, if the only process that exists was the rejection process, it would be okay. Because then, you know, if you're the best one, there's a big chance you're going to be hired. But the problem is every single good position in the market, there is many people going through the rejection process and there's one or two going through the acceptance process. So you might be the best one, Isaac, because you knew everything. You could answer all the questions. You are the best one. But even that, I trust Vinicius more because I work with him. Because guys, hiring people to the team is not only who is best. It's who you can trust more. Make sense that? Now, here's the thing to answer the question from the, from the person online. The problem is the following. How do you get trust on people? By doing network. Networking, whoever asked there, right? Networking is fundamental because... That's when you build trust with people. Because if I don't know you, I can't trust you. Make sense? So that's why network is fundamental. Does that mean that you should not learn how to do interviews? Well, the skill of participating in interviews is an important skill too. You know, did you have to do any interviews on in Amazon? You had to do interviews, right? They wanted to hire you, but it still interviewed you. So if you get there, and you're like a total bore, you don't answer any questions, you yell at people, right? They're not gonna hire you no matter how much they wanna hire you. You still have to have the skills of participating on, on interviews, but that's not what's gonna hire you. Make sense? Is that a good answer? Yes. Go ahead. What? So, so tell me, what do you wanna achieve in your life? And what prevents you from getting there? Because I want to help you out. Go ahead. Right. So, yeah, let me, let me, let me get here. Number 14, standards. Yes. Right, so so uh, what what do we call standards? Right, actually, uh, uh, you know, in the book we talk we talk broadly about uh, you know any technology defining process. Right, so you can have formal standards, you can have informal standards, you can have standards for your company, for example. Right, so your company might decide we're going to use Java in that particular version and using that vendor. That is a standard that you define inside your company, but that's not a worldwide standard. Right. Now, if you want to connect your, your computer to the power plug over there, right, 
that power plug is an is a national standard, right? Because you cannot have different plugs throughout the country, for example, because it's going to be a big mass, right? You know, like we just did in Brazil, we changed the plug. It was a really big mass, right? Uh, and yes, it was really. Uh, so it's very very interesting thing because. Brazil had what I think is the best plug ever because you work it with any connector from anywhere. But it was not a standard. So Brazil actually moved it to the official ISO standard. And it was a big mess, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, because it, it's the official standard. Yes. Yes, it's just us they use. Exactly. <laughs> right? So, it, but anyway. I digress here a little bit. So there are, you know, official standards, right? Uh, the best story that I know about standards is that, do you guys know the ISO standard for the metric system, right? You no know, meters and kilometers, right? Um, in, and, you know, and it's, it's the only ISO standard that's free for everyone to use, right? Now, do you know why it's free for everyone to use? Because the U.S., in an effort to get the U.S. to adopt the metric standards, the U.S. bought a worldwide license for everyone in the world to be able to use it. <laughs> but you guys don't use it. <laughs> yeah, standards are usually not free. <laughs> right. Okay, yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, st standards are usually not free because it's a it's a, it's, a, it's it's their license, right? That's why, for example, the Java standards you you license them, right? And so, uh, uh, you know, yeah, that's 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 the, right. <laughs> okay. Right. Yes. You know. But but anyway. But what 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 standards do? It's a very interesting thing, right? Because what standards do is that it creates a a definition that people follow, right? So the highest level of impact you can cause in the industry is you participating on the definition of a standard, right? Because once once you help create these standards, then you know vendors are going to use it. Company is going to use it. Country is going to use it. It's going to be a huge impact. So if you help define the standards, you create like a huge impact. Because in our careers, the way for us to grow our careers is for us to create more and more impact. So, for example, when we sit down and we write some piece of Java code, we write like one line of Java, we're creating some kind of impact. But it's very small. It's a tiny little impact, right? Because writing uh, lines of Java code, especially buggy ones, right, does not have a huge impact, right? But but so so the more you grow, the more you 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 cause impact. And so when you get to that level that you define a standard, then now you're defining how hundreds, maybe thousands or millions of applications are going to be built because you define that standard, right? So uh, uh, that's why we talk about this in the book, but that's why participating on the standards is so important for our careers because once you have a standard, right? It's like having a patent, right? You, know, have, you have a level of knowledge that's recognized by the industry in a way that is not very common. And it's not extremely hard to participate on standards, right? Because the standards are... Uh, are, are those organizations, you know, those, you know, know those organizations that uh, they're very important, but very few people want to participate in them, right? Because there's work involved and sometimes the work is not very fun. You have politics involved, right? So if Amazon wants to add a standard for cloud and I don't know, Oracle wants to add a standard for cloud and IBM wants to add a standard for cloud, they're all kind of pushing each other for, you know, I, add this, add that, you know, remove this, remove that because they're competing to build the standard, right? And so there's politics involved. Lots of people don't like politics, right? But it's where you have the highest level of high level, high level of impact, right? So Chandra, that was the definition of standard, this whole discussion about standards, but you had a question. So what the question was? I see. So 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 the question is how do you participate on that, right? 
Well, I think the best way to reach a participant on that is find things that, that, that you care about. So, for example, there is a group of Java standards, right? The Java standards are run by an organization called the JCP, the Java Community Process. That's actually this shirt right here, right? The JCP.org is the, is the organization that defines the Java standards, right? So once those standards are created, everyone has to follow them, right? So if you're interested in Java, for example, you can participate on the JCP to define the Java standards. There are different levels that you participate. For example, the easiest level of all is that you just pay attention at it, right? You know, you don't you don't actually participate in more a lot of discussions, but when, when the standard comes out, you look at it, you know, before it gets final, right? You have several levels, right? So before it gets final, you take a look at it, you, you, you may, maybe make some comments or you, you, you say, I like it or didn't like, whatever. Right? So you just look at it. It's a good way of to participate. It's very small, but it's important, right? But then you can grow inside. You know, you can, you can, you can become a member of the organization. You can vote. Actually, that's a very interesting thing, Chandra, because right now, I think it was yesterday or two days ago, we opened the elections for the JCP. Right. So if you are a member of the JCP, you can vote on the elections. And if you are a member of the JCP and you decide to vote in the elections, you know, vote for us. Right. So Java, the Brazilian Java Society, it's on the ballots. Right. Uh, we have been part of the JCP for many years now. Um, we are the first Java group that joined the JCP many years ago. Uh, I was uh, in, in, in 2000. I was the only, in the whole history of the JCP, I'm the only individual that ever paid to be part of the JCP. Right? <laughs> right, exactly. Right? And so, uh, uh, and so uh, uh, but, but, you know, but so Java participant in JCP, we made it more open. We made it easy for everyone to participate, right? That's one thing that we did. And we are on the ballot right now. So if you like the work that we do, Please come and vote for us. So that's a good way for you to participate in this standard, right? So you don't even have to be very technical. Right? You just participate on, on choosing who, who's going to have the discussion, right? Uh, so Amazon, for example, is part of the JCP. Uh, BNY Mellon is part of the JCP, right? So we have, you know, Chandra is there uh, as on the executive committee also. Uh, and so, so, so you can participate by voting or you can get, get more and more involved, right? So you can participate by having, by the discussions, you can participate by suggestion, suggesting, uh, topics. So, so all of those things are different. So here's one thing I want to talk about really quick. That's it has to do with that. Uh, we call in the technical industry, we have a name that we call meritocracy, right? We have this idea that the more merit we have, the more we grow into technology, right? Now, here's the, th here's the thing. A lot of people think the merit is how much I know or how much or how well my, how good my contributions are. And that is not, that's not what meritocracy means in the IT world, right? Meritocracy means who puts the work who does it, right? So for example, in the user group here, right? You know, we have Barry, Chandra, Paul, and sorry, what's your name? Siri, right? That, and Mike, my Mike's not here. I'm just talking about the people that are here, right? But notice Siri, she said, she's not, she's not part of the board, right? But she's, but when she, when she introduced herself, she said, I'm the support here, right? You know? Because I know, I know how much work. I'm sure you put a lot of work to make things happen. So, so meritocracy is who puts more work, right? So people that, so so the people that are here that they put the effort. You know, Barry went on and pick us up, up, up pick us up in the hotel. He's been talking to me for several weeks to organize this whole thing, right? You know, those people that put more work, they get more benefits. Why they get more benefits? Because you know, because you know these speakers, you know the companies, right? You know, you, your name shows up more times. Not because you're better than anyone else, but because you put more work. Same thing here in the standards. The people that put more work, they they get they get they they have more impact because they put more work. Make sense? All right.
questions, guys. Where you want to get and, and how I can help you get there. You want to do interns? He wants in, he, he wants interns. You're going to do internships? All right. So who, who here wants to get to, to get amazing salaries? No? Oh, yeah. Okay, good, right? That's super nice sell for you. All right. So now, who, who wants to work on amazing pro projects? All right. So, so you guys want something, right? How about you? What do you want? Yeah. You're going to be a teacher. Okay, that's cool. So what prevents you from being a teacher today? Right. Okay, cool. So so being a teacher here, uh, where's where is mentors, mentors, public speaking, right? Um, you know, uh, uh so those are those are some, some of the things there. So I understand that there is a level that you have to be official teacher, right? So you have to pass exams, you have to be accepted at university, for example, all of those things. But here's the important thing. The skills that you need to be a teacher are not reflecting the tests that you have to pass, are not reflecting the politics that you have to do, right? So the sooner you start to help others, the sooner you start to teach others, the sooner you start to mentor other people, the sooner you get all the skills that you need to be a teacher, right? And then... And today, guys, there's one thing, especially for the younger generation, there's one thing that's very important. Uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of that. It's like an invention that, that's been around for a few years now. It's called the internet. You heard that, right? I'm sure, yeah. Okay, so, so this whole thing about the internet is that teachers in the internet, people that teach other people in the internet, are, have an amazing opportunities, right? Because every time you help someone, you teach something for someone, you build a relationship, you build trust. So for example, all my mentees, they trust me because they learn from me, right? And I have mentees that are friends like Chandra, for example. I have, you know, I've been uh, helping Vinicius, for example, for many, many, many years in his career um, as, as a friend, right? But I have mentees that that I that that I professional mentees, right? I mean, they they hire me to help them, right? I have mentees that access my content free online, right? That don't pay me anything. They learn everything because I I don't hide anything. Everything I know, I tell, I teach. Whoever asks, I I'll teach everything I know, right? So so you know you you can you can learn from me for free, paid as a friend. There's all kinds of ways you can learn from me, right? And so. And all of those people kind of would be the trust relationship with, with them. And because you have this trust relationship, what happens? They start doing things because they trust you. So when you, you say, look, you have to do networking, they'll say, man, I don't like to do networking. I don't know how to do it. I'm, I'm, I'm shy. You know, I don't have courage. I don't think it's fun. But because Bruno told me to do, I'll do it because I want to grow my career. And then when they do that, they have results and they get even better trust in you. Make sense? So you can build that kind of trust even if you're not a teacher yet. Make sense? So the sooner you start doing this, the better. Yes. Right? All right. Who else? How about you, man? What do you want to do in your career? I hope to be successful. That's good. So I, I'm going to give you an, an, an advice from one of the top Java champions in the market, right? I really like him a lot. And it's a guy now named Heinz Kibbutz, right? So Heinz is one of the top Java champions. He's very well known, very visible. He runs a great event called J. Crete. And so he, right? Yes. So J. Crete's awesome event, right? And so, um, and so Heinz was, in, in, he, he was uh, he, he came as a, a guest to my mentorship group and he was telling people some uh, some interesting ideas and he said something that really stick with me and he said uh, um, if 
you show yourself in the market as an expert, you get called to solve the hardest problems. And by solving the hardest problems, you become an expert, right? So whatever it is that you want to do, focus on that. Go do it. Tell people that you're doing it. Tell people that you're learning. Tell people how much you know about that. And then because people are going to trust you on that, they're going to call you to work on the hardest problems. And when you work on the hardest problems, you become the experts. And here's a secret that I've learned. I was even talked to this uh, to, to Sylvia yesterday. A secret that I learned. When that's such a heavy word, right? Experts, right? You know, but here's the reality. The big problems are never solved by one person alone. The big problems always require a group of people to solve. So that means when you get called into the big the, to, to solve the big problems, even if you're not the best person to solve it, but being part of the solution, being part of the group that's going to discuss things will get you the knowledge that you need. So don't be afraid of putting yourself in the hardest problems because you're not going to be doing it alone. You're not going to be working on this alone. Right? Okay. Yeah. We're not going to. So, so put yourself in the hardest problems and work with other people to solve the hardest problems. Because meritocracy is not about how much you know. It's not about how much you, how good you are. It's about how much of the effort you're willing to put. Okay? So I invite all of you to put to put a lot of effort into this. And please, uh, that's the chance that you have here to download the book, right? The Developer Career Master Plan. So if you have not downloaded it yet, uh, let me know. And uh, I think I'm out of time right now. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I'm just going to go straight, right? Straight, right? So so let me introduce this guy here. So Vinicius is a good friend of mine. Uh, there's one thing that Vinicius told me one time. He said, we're not friends. We're family, right? And that's really true, right? You know, I, I've, uh, I, Vinicius' uh, kids, right? We, they, they grew up with my kids. Uh, and, you know, we have a very, very good relationship in terms of family. Vinicius is an awesome, awesome uh, guy in all around. Many, many Java ones together, right? We've been, we've been working together for many, many years. Uh, he's, he's the uh, founder and creator of TDC, one of the largest uh, developer events in the world, right? He now works for Amazon. And one cool thing that I like about, about Vinicius is that when he, pre he presents a talk, it's not for the faint of heart. You know, his talks are always very, very risky. Lots of things can go wrong, right? And so if you, uh, Vinicius Sanger, woohoo! And you need this? You need the Madonna microphone? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh. Yeah. Just let me do a double check in my computer to see if everything is working. Yeah. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, I was part. Okay. Oh. <laughs> uh huh. Just let me double check here if everything is okay. Mm -mm -mm. Just one minute. Okay. 
Tu te connais Oh, oh, oh. Ok. Mm -hmm. Ok. Good, good, good. Mm -hmm. Share a screen and then Hello, Jogi. Good to see you again, Jogi. So, hey, hey guys, how are you doing? So, I'm so happy to be here. The first time I'm here in this group. Thanks, guys. Hey. So, the judge is the master for geometry groups. Yeah, that's me. Hey, how are you doing? I'm true. Since I'm going over there by the camera, go over there by Nisha's place. Yes. Hello, guys. How are you doing? I uh, don't hear me because I don't have a microphone. So, that's okay. I, I'll come back later. All right. All right. So, yeah, so Jaggi is the master for geometry groups. And uh, so Duke, right, the, the guy right there, the master for Java, and Jerry is for, for Java, right? So first time that Jerry is here in... Uh, That's another Jerry's first visit to, to Madison, New Jersey. Yes, exactly. Yeah. First visit to, 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 the, to the State Garden Java group, right? Garden State. Garden State. State. Garden State. 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 Garden State, man. You have to know how to name the group. Exactly. Yeah, okay. So uh, now the cool thing is that... All right, bring, is, bring him over here. Oh, right. yeah. Yes. So the cool, the cool thing is that Barry uh, wears wears a jug t-shirt quite a while. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, guys. So I'll come back there. Okay, all right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, thank you very much for for this space. Uh, during this talk, I want to share some of my passions that include. Uh, coding and Java. I'm doing Java for the last, I think, uh, 20 years. And uh, <clears throat> I this year has been amazing because I just completed uh, 31 years working with software development. I started playing with games when I was like 90 years old. And when I was 13, I already had a job as a trainee. So, and then I skipped the university. I skipped out the, the college, <laughs> and uh, I did my path. So there is always a way to 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 do your your path. And uh, so I love hardware and do-it-yourself projects. Uh, beside uh, doing like Java and enterprise things, I love to code, to surf, to cook, and music. And I love to put everything together. And it's kind of the thing I will try to do today here. Uh, I really, one of the reasons that I moved to California is that I'm passionate by surfing and there I can push my limits. I, I am pushing my limits there. And, uh, but I think that in technology, we are all surfers. Instead of having a surfboard, we have a laptop. Instead of surfing a physical wave, we used to surf a virtual waves. What I call as virtual waves is like a transistor in the past, the invention was a big wave. And then we moved from analog circuits to digital circuits. And then we have personal computers in the 80s. That was a very huge wave arriving the computers at home. And then we had all the internet happening 10 years later was a big wave that we could surf and we could take advantage and we could improve our career and skills based on that waves. Quantum computing will be another big wave still inside universities for research, but for sure is also a big wave. So connected to the topics that Bruno was discussing, um, try to... Notice the waves to fuel the technology waves 
and is that kind of wave that you like to surf, then take advantage and put yourself as the master of uh, Node.js, as the master of DevOps, of uh, testing, of uh, quantum computing, of IoT like I did. So, and we have big waves, small waves. We have short waves with a lot of power. We have medium waves that is very long waves that you can hide for five minutes. Like uh, in Peru, they have Shikama. It's the longest uh, wave in the globe. You can surf up to seven minutes, the same wave. And I think that Java is a big and long wave that we are surfing the last 20 to 25 years. And so it's a really good example of a technology. And the people like to say in the internet, especially uh, young developers, that oh, Java is dead. Trust me, we will all die before COBOL. <laughs> so so uh, there is no way to, 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 to queue a programming language like Java. And Java is everywhere. Enterprises, banks, e-commerce, Amazon.com uses a lot of Java behind the, 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 the website. We had uh, embedded space like um, NASA projects. We sent uh, uh, Java uh, uh, to the space. And it was a very interesting talk that I, I, I watched at, at uh, Java One. They had a problem with the, the date and time API because there in the space, the, a minute is less than, can be less than 60 seconds and they need to compensate somehow. So imagine this kind of problem that we already solved with Java. And uh, we have different programming languages that you can use like Scala, Kotlin, Groove, Clojure. Here in US, Clojure is a, a, a very uh, popular uh, programming language that runs under the JVM. And the huge open source ecosystem is another thing that I love to work with open source solutions. I hate to sell products. And so at AWS, I try to focus more on our open source stuff. And uh, the Java community, look at this image, isn't beautiful. It was the, the generative AI did for me. I would never design something like that. I said, I need Java. And look, they cannot put the Java logo because it's a trademark, but there are some references for Java here, the, the, the coffee here. Amazing. I'm doing, I'm trying to, to see how my slides can get better with generative AI. And I just love this image to represent all the Java community, how brilliant it is. And, and I think that this is something that uh, uh, is the most important for me at this time is much more the friends and the family that I have with all the Java communities than any money that I save by working with Java. Any, any part of the globe, especially if you are with Bruno, <laughs> you will have someone to host you there. <laughs> it's really impressive how Java is also uh, travel agents. <laughs> and the other thing is that we are passionate by Java at Amazon and at AWS. It's our first and main programming language. If you are shopping at Amazon.com, you are triggering a lot of Java, millions of lines of Java code. And it's very, uh, 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 like, uh, during uh, two minutes shopping, probably we will update the, the website more than 100 times. <laughs> so during your, your shop. And at AWS, indeed, that we also develop many of our cloud services with Java. So we have billions of lines of code, of Java code at AWS. So we love Java there. So just for AWS and Amazon, 
we can keep Java alive for many, many years. And uh, we are we were using so much Java in 2016 that uh, we were running on OpenJDK and uh, we have specific needs for our workloads. And we start to creating our own Java version based on OpenJDK. So we hire James Gosling, the Java creator. He is a distinguished engineer at, at uh, AWS. And I'm really proud that I work very close to James. He's the most humble Amazonian person uh, with his level, you know. It's really impressive how he creates the Java and he feels like a, a really normal guy. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and then we did the Amazon Corredo, which is our open source, no cost distribution of uh, JDK with all the Amazon innovation. We have at Amazon the privilege to try some innovations and fail at Amazon website before we push the code to the community. So this is a huge privilege. What we are pushing on Amazon Corredo are things that are stable enough to be used by other companies because we try it in heavy and hard workloads. So uh, that's the history of Amazon and AWS and Java. And also, Java is a sustainable programming language in terms of energy consumption. And uh, working there, it's really impressive the numbers that we have uh, and the number of energy we are saving by migrating our workloads from Java 11 to Java 17 without any change in any line of code, just upgrading the JVM from Java 11 to Java 17. Sometimes we save like 3,000, 5,000 EC2 instances that host our cloud service. So that's something important, especially if you are a big company like Netflix, uh, like uh, Amazon, that you have many Java workloads, and then you can take the advantage of new Java versions uh, and be more sustainable just by updating your JVM version. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That rightmost column is memory intensity? Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the first column is just about uh, the, the, the energy consumption, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, Rust and C is still the best uh, programming languages, but we did a very big research because the same team that maintains the Java Corredo, uh, we are also doing a lot for Rust as well. So we start researching if we should migrate some AWS services from Java to Rust, but then uh, the numbers couldn't prove enough uh, advantage for doing this kind of migration. So here we have an article with uh, all the sustainability with Rust and all the, 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 the benchmarks that we had in the past with Java. Uh, and then, now we have the modern app with Java and we have different types of frameworks that you can use. I really love to use Quarkus for developing enterprise workloads. Quarkus is uh, an open source uh, framework from Red Hat and it's beautiful. Like uh, one, two, three, five, six lines of code, right? Six or seven maybe because sometimes we have other things to add, but here is just an example. I'm creating a, a, a an application called PigBank with Java 11. Now it can be Java 17. <laughs> uh, 
And then I'm adding support for our database, DynamoDB, for REST Easy, and also support for running the application as a serverless application. I build the application with this command. I will push this application to AWS Cloud. So very simple lines of code, and you have a serverless, modern app, sustainable, sample application running in the cloud. So if you are looking for investing in a new kind of framework, or like myself, if you are if you were a Java or J2EE developer, you will feel like that the fun is back to Java with Quarkus. It's really a big pleasure to develop uh, enterprise and, 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 and APIs with Quarkus. And I think that Gen AI, as I mentioned, is a big wave, a big wave to surf. And Gen, Gen AI is changing the way we are coding, the way we are modernizing, the way we are moving from uh, older Java versions. So we have, we can use generative AI to pick up a very big legacy and say, hey, this is my legacy that I'm using in struts. And this is the sample application that I want to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, refactor to this Quarkus sample application. And then you can train the generative AI foundation models and have most of the recoding done by generative AI. You, instead of doing yourself, you start being a code curator or something like that, a code reviewer uh, from the generative AI. And uh, how we prepare talks and how we learn as well. I'm always like, it's interesting because Google now, when you ask something to Google or to Alexa, and the answer is like, okay, this is the 10 years ago. It's an intelligence from 10 years ago. And then you go to the chat GPT and you ask the same thing. And wow, how much more precise it can be, depending on the context. Because as using search engine, we start like learning how to provide more context for search engine. And for generative AI, we need to provide even more context to have good results. And we are changing the way we surf. I, I am living in California and I'm really happy to see the surf reborning because now we use this kind of hydrofoil that you don't have any contact with the surfboard and the water. And then you can surf unimaginable waves that never uh, break the wave. The, the wave that is just a a very small one, and you can keep surfing forever that wave. And this equipment was just possible to be developed because artificial intelligence. Without artificial intelligence, we would take 10 years more to develop this kind of thing. And indeed, we have some uh, of this hydrofoil that they have small servo motors inside, and they have trained artificial intelligence models inside the foil, and they are doing inference in the water. So how crazy it is, how the technology, since the second war that they start using fiberglass, and they went to Hawaii, which was a big arm base, and then the soldiers start surfing in Hawaii and building surfboards with fiberglass and bring to California and the surf boom came to all of the world. And now is the second uh, sport in the world after soccer. So I'm really happy to be surfing this generative AI wave. And just to show some examples of things that you can do with generative AI and coding. Uh, we have this new product that can be for free, that is Amazon Code Whisperer. 
that you can type your code like this. Look here. I am typing a comment. Create a method to find all entries on DynamoDB. Boom. Create a method to find an entry, uh, our entries. Uh, create a method to find an entry by date. And then you just type the comment and the artificial intelligence provide the code for you. So that's, it doesn't mean that it, it, you will be replaced as a software developer, but you will have much more time and you will launch your product and uh, 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 you will reach your goals, your company and your business goals much faster. And this is the importance of using this kind of tool. Uh, Code Whisperer is for free for individuals. Uh, we don't store your code. We we uh, send your code to the Code Whisper service, and then we have the inference, and we propose some piece of code, but we don't store. Uh, especially in the professional version, the free version, you can opt out. And you can limit, and then you can say, if it's a Apache license, I don't want to use any kind of code fragment from a Apache license. So that's another thing that is important for big companies. And give a try. I am talking about Code Whisper because I work for AWS, but give a try with Copilot. GitHub Copilot is being in the market for more time and is really good product from Microsoft, from, from GitHub, that is from Microsoft. So give a try, we call as AI coding assistant. And then you can write your code and say, okay, write a JUnit test for me for this code, for example. It's really impressive how it's a one-way door. If you start using this kind of tool, you will get addicted because you, will not uh, write more boilerplate code. <laughs> yeah, good point. Do you remember when the internet started and then the universities also said that, no, no, you cannot use internet to get your job done. <laughs> and I was in companies that they didn't allow, they block the internet access. It's happening the same thing with, oh, and security, we have concern because we noticed that ChatGPT just leak a lot of important information. And this is evolution, evolution. And then I think that it can be danger, but we are in a constant evolution uh, for having this uh, kind of tool in our daily job. And we also talking about ChatGPT. If you want to create your own ChatGPT, we don't have a, 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 someone to replace ChatGPT, but we have, we do provide foundation models that you can create your own ChatGPT. And that's what we did. Uh, for example, like we create a kind of ChatGPT using uh, uh, Amazon Bedrock. And this is, uh, uh, a nice slide because uh, I was playing with, and then I asked, what is Lua? Lua is another programming language that we use uh, to, to write uh, Roblox games. It's very nice programming language. And then I asked, who is Bruno Souza? Look, Bruno Souza can be any Bruno Souza in the world. And then say that Bruno is a Brazilian computer science, right? who is one of the core developers of Lua programming language. <laughs> and Lua, the guy that invented Lua programming language, he was a Brazilian guy, but he already died. So, so it's not updated. But then uh, today, I just change here. Uh, just to show how important it is to provide uh, the right context. So I say, who is Bruno Souza from Sou Java, Brazil? I don't have enough information on uh, What is Java? Uh, Java is a, uh, who is Bruno Souza, the Brazilian Java man? 
And then it was very humble, the answer. And for I do not have enough background information to provide, but Bruno is a, a Brazilian Java man based on the context. I can make some guesses. So really, Bruno is likely a software developer and everything here is not complete, but it's not that wrong. And it was the same application and the same intelligence. So providing context is the secret to take more advantage from generative AI. If you don't provide, we used to say, shit in, shit out. So uh, with uh, uh, artificial intelligence in general. So nice. Let's move here. Uh, I also build uh, this Quarkus plus generative AI example if you want to play with modern app or create a kind of API with Java and a modern app framework using Amazon Bedrock, you can base uh, your code on this uh, example. But what I like Java more, even more, is that there is life beyond enterprises. Java is not just a programming language for doing home banking or e-commerce websites or complex enterprises workloads. We can have Java like I did I when I live in Brazil. Oh, this is my dog. He's still there. Almost tarde. And then this, it was my old Volkswagen bus. And then I have a Raspberry Pi that is a small computer low energy consumption. Inside my old Volkswagen bus, I use a OBD2 sensor to connect the Raspberry Pi to the engine. And then I could monitor the engine. And then what I did, I developed a Java application in the cloud to control the sensors of my old Volkswagen bus. I developed in the cloud. And then instead of running in the cloud, I used a software called Greengrass that I could download pieces of the cloud to my old Volkswagen bus to run locally. And if I have internet connection and I want to send some data back to the cloud, I can do it. If I am, I am offline because I'm driving in some place that I don't have any access, I could store locally the information and once I have internet, I could synchronize this with the cloud. So this is amazing way to learn and to put your passion. I, I, I am really passionate by camping. Uh, in California, I have a, 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 a an RV to replace my passion for old Volkswagen bus because believe it or not, the old Volkswagen bus there is more expensive than a complete RV. <laughs> Oh, man, that's good. We can create a, a Java old Volkswagen bus user group. <laughs> and you can also download trained AI models to do inference local, locally uh, inference in the AI model. So it's amazing how you can you can use the technology and then you can take your passion for cars and put all together to play with something new that will make you excited about. Side projects. I think that side projects is something really important in anyone's career. And then we have this other tool called processing.org that is a programming language based on Java. You can write pure Java here, but it's a simplification of Java for artists, there are many artists that are using Java for doing like a, 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 during the shows to react to the music and blink lights and things like that. And here I did a demo that I'm using processing and fast Fourier transform. That is something that is everywhere. Fast Fourier transform that you can convert uh, 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 signals to frequency. And what I'm doing here, I am 
detecting the notes of my instrument, converting to IoT messages, sending all the way to the cloud and controlling home appliances. Why? Because I can. There is no other reason. And to learn and to talk about, when I talk about fast Fourier transform, oh, this guy is smart. I never did a math. I use a library for doing that. <laughs> I know, I know the basics of fast Fourier transform, but I would never have the skill to calculate everything by myself. And we have a very nice library called mining for processing that will help you to do this. Yeah, we got a demo. Just let me check here if everything is okay with my device. Okay. Or if I need to restart. Oh, that's good, good and fast. Okay, uh, so what I'm going to do here, I have this uh, script running on process, processing, and you can see that I'm analyzing for notes, basic notes, uh, and sending like, uh, okay, I want to publish the note to uh, MQTT, to uh, IoT service, and if the note is G, which is the first string, I want to turn off the lamp. If the note is C, second string, I want to turn on the lamp. And let's see if we can make it work. <laughs> and this is a sustainable device because you don't need any kind of battery here <laughs> or you can use your voice <laughs> yeah in relation yeah 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 so this is amazing to see that you can use an instrument as a keyboard or as a, a, an input for your crazy idea. Uh, so this is Java. It's pure Java. We, I'm doing this demo again. Bruno is tired of seeing this demo the last 10 years. But I, I keep doing because first, Fast Fourier Transform is behind almost all deep learning algorithms that you have in the market. It's heavily used. So this is the basis. If you want to, to be a master in, in deep learning, it's important to learn more about Fast Fourier. And the history for Fourier, uh, uh, Fourier uh, was the, the mathematician, how to say mathematical? Math Mathematician, thank you. I'm so tired today that, and uh, and then uh, he was working for Napoleon, and Beethoven was the musician for Napoleon, and then that was the squad, Fourier, Beethoven, and Napoleon, and and then the relation between Fourier looking at Beethoven and thinking, I need to discover what is this different tones that he's playing and why and then he was inspired by that and with fast Fourier we could create many many things for image recognition and wow it's very used in the industry so uh the other thing that i i really like is to integrate uh, uh minecraft and roblox with Java somehow. I created this sample game at Roblox called the J Castle. It's a game that you have a Quarkus backend API to manage quiz and you need to answer the quiz to open the doors, your castle doors. And I did some IoT integration with Roblox, AI integration, and also fast Fourier 
transform integration. So let me open the jcastle here. I think that now I need to stop the PowerPoint. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to play the game. And then you can see here, powered by AWS, I pay for having this T-shirt inside Roblox. Uh, and then uh, I can go here. I have some question here. How much, how many bytes a double variable consume? Uh, so I can try answer one, answer two. And you see here that I have a, a gate and then answer three, boom. And then they start opening because I, 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 I have the right one. And then I can go inside the castle and then you need to find the other quiz to complete this game. I will show just one more here. And okay, what is the dot class signature in the initial bytes? This one is Cafe Bobby. I will click answer number four. And then you can see that I'm closing uh, now the, the gate from the castle. And then you keep doing. This is just to show how you can create educational games for like uh, doing uh, 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 certifications for uh, trainings, inside training, security trainings, or any kind of thing, you can develop a game to prove that, to test your employees, for example, in a more sophisticated way. And now, let me show you something here. I'm going to play this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and then one more here uh ah, i have here also integrations like here iot lamp off and then take some time <laughs> and then I can ask here IoT temperature. I have a sensor, a real sensor here. Let's see the the the, the, the room temperature. Twenty four Celsius. <laughs> of course, twenty four. We pay for that. And then let's. Uh, see some AI as well integrated with Roblox. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, we are really looking forward to have more people using the Jcastle for doing cool stuff, hackathons. And the good thing is, uh, since I joined AWS, I have this concept of my demos, your demos. So we can access all my demos on a GitHub repository and also we have a very complete tutorials called the AWS Java Academy. It's open source. You can replicate. You have different types of lessons here, basic lessons for Java, and then the Quarkus Roblox workshop that you learn to replicate all these demos. It's a three to four hours workshop. And then anyone can use at universities, user groups, hackathons, in our company. And we have also Quarkus workshop for DynamoDB, for SQL databases as well. So I'm really happy to have this central repository 
for everything that I write for AWS, I also publish inside the AWS Java Academy. If I write a blog post, I'm going to put it here as well. If I'm going to do a LinkedIn post, an uh, 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 important post, I replicate here as well. And uh, I would love to have all my, my history documented this way, and I would recommend for the ones that are getting to the market that create your, your log and your history, organize your documents, your presentation, because after 10 years, you will see how much you, you produce it. And then we create, uh, in the Java Academy, we also have this piggy bank application that you can use this application for real to manage your banking accounts. Uh, that's something that I'm using, a cloud application. I try many different solutions in the cloud, paid solutions in the cloud. I never found a solution that fits for, for me. And then I create myself this piggy bank application that is inside uh, the Java Academy. And also, indeed, I have the user interface to deal with my money inside Roblox as well, showing that, okay, there is life beyond web interfaces and JavaScript and things like that. So, and also in December 14, 15, and 16, we are going to run a special version of this workshop for free that is the train the trainer, where we will train people that want to replicate the workshop. And how teachers, teachers, and showing cool stuff to teach uh, 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 math uh, uh, to, to uh, teenagers and things like that. So all the links that I have uh, for this year, all the things that I produced this year, the links are, are, are available here in this URL. You will be redirected to a LinkedIn page that you can access. And then for me, it's better than providing the static links here because if I remember something or I produce anything new, I just update my LinkedIn uh, page. So yeah, now we have time for questions. Thank you. Uh-huh, okay. perfect. I find that in general, Java doesn't have the same pointing in IoT as say C or C++ or Python. Is that because I'm not aware of all the Java that's being used? Or is it a real, is it a, is it a real thing? And if so, what can we in the Java community do about it? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a perfect question. Java is not uh, anymore available for microcontrollers. So if you have like a two megabytes microcontroller with two megabytes of RAM, uh, like G Java ME is not in the market anymore. Right. So, but Java is still very big uh, for bigger devices like... Uh, devices that can run uh, embedded Linux with 128 uh, megabytes of memory. And we have in the industry airplanes, we have uh, uh, cars running Java uh, with this green grass that I show. Green grass is all based in Java and included uh, James Gosling helped a lot to develop the, the green grass that I was running inside my Volkswagen van. So Java is not being used anymore for really tiny devices, but it's still being used a lot for smart cameras that runs code inside the camera to monitor like uh, cars and, and trucks from fleets. So Java is still being used a lot for IoT, but not for microcontrollers anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you very much, you guys. Thank you very much for being here Friday late this time. Yeah. I've never done this before. Um, whoa. I'm going to turn the... How do I do it?
Well, this is interesting. Yeah, turn this around. And unzoom it. Oh boy, Barry gets to be on camera. Um, those of you who are in, um, we're going to do the raffle now. Um, we're raffling off a copy of um, a year for, uh, free of um, IntelliJ license. And I'm looking at it that way. So um, if you're interested in such a thing, then I'm going to ask you to give me a number. And um, those of you who are on YouTube can also give me a number after I've gotten numbers from people here. So, yes. No? Yeah? No? Okay. What? No, the number's one. All right. Okay. All right. You got you got you got one. And anybody on the um uh YouTube feed, I'm gonna wait about twenty seconds. Um you can type in two, yeah, we got twenty one. Oh, Dimitri, you're gonna be two because you're the second person to chime in. And anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, we got one and we got two. All right. I actually create. Wow. I actually created a um, quantum computer program to um, do this. Come up with a random number. And coming up with a random number... Um, is um between one and two. All right, let me try running it. Really? Yeah. Too few people here doing this. Uh, you know what? Next one I'm going to do, um, you're going to get divisible by one and Dimitri's going to get divisible by two. All right, here we go. Really? Divisible's only odd, odd versus even. I should know that. Yeah, here we go. All right, we got 32. That's Dimitri. You'll be here next time. We'll win that. You'll we have another meeting next week. You'll be here. I'm 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 sure you'll get it. All right. Thank you everybody for coming. We'll see you next week. Woo! That's right. No, I want to use a quantum computer. Here we go. We're going to include this in our meeting. They will do that. Yeah. All right, everybody. You want to? Is it, you want people to come up? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. And if anyone doesn't want to be on camera, then you never know these days. Now uh, turn around so that we can see you. Turn around. You're the yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Come on, Barry. All right. Come on. You gotta go this way. Inside here. Come on. All right. There you go. Cool. There right. we go. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. <laughs> one more. One more. Okay. Cool. One more. One more. One more. One more. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you again. Thanks.